In the United States, a disease is considered rare if there are fewer than 200,000 patients. Neiman pick type C, that's Addy and Cassie disorder, afflicts fewer than 200. The other numbers are just as daunting. Of the more than 6,000 known diseases, we only have treatments for about 500. And there's a rule of thumb for the companies who make new medicines. For every 10,000 compounds you patent, you can expect one success. That's just one drug on the market. Now, if you've only got a few hundred potential customers, there's no way to get a return on your investment. For big pharmaceutical companies, rare diseases look like a big black hole. For the Hempels, it's just another challenge to overcome. It was more than a year after the grim diagnosis, and the twins were getting worse. The Hempels had no time to lose. For one doctor and, and uh, her support staff and two parents, it's a daunting task. Uh, so we have a, effectively like a little tiny biotech or something running out of our kitchen. We spend a lot of time just on our computers, you know, making the right kinds of connections and just trying to move things forward. Mix this with saline. The girls were four now, and Hugh and Chris were feeding them cyclodextrin, a special form of sugar. You, you tried the different products, like in cyclodextrin. You tried everything before you gave it to your children. Yes, I mean, we do that all the time. I mean, most of the things that we can get over the counter, natural supplements, we do try it. I've tried their seizure medication, some of these medications, um, just to see what it feels like. The twins seemed to improve, but it certainly wasn't dramatic. Sometimes I'm just going through old videotape, and then I, ha you know, I see and I can see the difference. But so it's just a constant reminder. What happened to Humpty? He broke. Time is our is, enemy. Yeah, time is our enemy. Yeah. There were reasons to hold out hope. The Hempels had donated skin cells to the National Institutes of Health. They had the scars on their arms to prove it. This is our uh, drug screening robot. In a special lab, a giant robot tested various compounds on the cells. And put it in the automated microscope here, which will tell you whether the drug or the chemical had any effect. They looked at 3,000 different drugs at 15 different concentrations. Cyclodextrin was among just a handful of chemicals to show any effect. But according to animal research, to get the best chance of success, you needed to inject it straight into the nervous system. The Hempels would need sign-off from the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. The FDA wanted safety data, and typically that could take years. But with cyclodextrin, that data already existed. The Hempels just needed to get their hands on it. Once we realized that Johnson & Johnson had the safety data that we needed, then we contacted them. Problem was, Johnson & Johnson wouldn't hand it over. It was a trade secret. In the meantime, Addie and Cassie just waited. Sharing data? That should have been the easy part. You can imagine the anger these parents now felt. Chris let it out on her blog. All we need from them is to provide our doctors and the FDA with more information from their files that could help save the lives of Addie and Cassie and possibly 500 children around the world afflicted with Neiman Pick type C disease. I guess the world will soon find out how much Johnson & Johnson cares about kids who are dying. Johnson & Johnson heard the message, loud and clear. The very next morning, they came through. Just a few weeks after that, the FDA gave the go-ahead. I still to this day vividly remember that first infusion and how scary it was, even though we knew fundamentally it was a safe thing. Uh, Cassie's now getting the injection of cyclodexin directly into her spinal fluid, not into the blood, but directly into the spinal fluid, where it may have more of an impact. Pretty good shot getting that needle in there right away. So. You've done a few times. <laughs> Over the next year, each girl had about two dozen infusions. And it's possible that maybe some things might be reversible. And an amazing thing started to happen. The girls seemed more attentive, 
They had fewer seizures. They'd lost a lot of their hearing. Oh, did you, what are you mad about? New tests found it was better. Remember, this is a disease that never gets better. I think if the girls were not receiving the cyclodextrin, that they would be in a much worse predicament, and it's even possible that they may not be with us at this time. But make no mistake, Addie and Cassie were still very sick. Chris and Hugh had been talking to researchers, and they now wanted to try a new method, a tiny pump implanted in the brain. It would deliver a steady stream of cyclodextrin, maybe the best hope to save the girls' lives. But the FDA pushed back. Their concern, it was too dangerous. When I received the call from the FDA, I had one of those heart-sinking moments. They don't want to get themselves in trouble because they let us do something that hurt our kids. But from our perspective, our kids are on a very, very well understood, very rapid path to demise anyway. It was about to be three years of back and forth. All the time, the Hempels had to keep reminding themselves they were doing the right thing, despite enormous risks. Did people call you guys excessive risk takers? Oh, yeah. Who, who were these people? People oh, online? Yeah, scientists. Yeah. Yeah. And for them, it's not so much. I mean, honestly, parents, it was two, the parents in particular, lots of parents uh, sort of said, oh, my God, I would never do that. I mean, they're monsters. They're experimenting on their children. Um, my answer is, you know, to each their own. In early 2013, the FDA finally gave permission to implant the pump. The girls were nine years old. Would it make a difference? 